Hello, everyone. I'm Lin Xiaoma from Microsoft Research. Today, I will talk about Rimer, enabling holistic deep learning compiler optimizations with R tasks. This is a joint work with colleagues from Peking University, Shanghai Tech University, and Microsoft Research. Zhi Qiang and I contributed equally to this work. In recent years, we have seen a lot of advances in deep learning. For example, image and speech recognition, natural language processing, some of them can even be comparable with humans. With these advances, deep learning has been applied in many real-world applications, like self-driving, search engine, and so on. On the model side, more and more advanced DNN models are proposed for better accuracy. On another side, many hardware accelerators like GPU, TPU, IPU are designed for DNN computation. However, there is a huge gap in mapping DNN models to hardware for efficient execution. Fortunately, deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, Onyx Runtime are designed to bridge this gap. They provide programming APIs for users to build DNN models and can transparently schedule DNN computation to various hardware. In existing frameworks, a DNN is usually modeled as a data flow graph. Well, each node represents an operator with a unit of computation, like a matrix multiplication, and an edge represents the dependency between operators. The data flow graph representation naturally contains two levels of parallelism. The first level is the inter-operator parallelism. Well, operators without dependencies may run in parallel. The second level is the intra-operator parallelism. Well, an operator has inherent internal data parallelism and can leverage hardware accelerators for parallel computation. Take a matrix multiplication as, a, as the example. It's usually partitioned into independent and homogeneous sum matrices for parallel computation on accelerators like GPU. To exploit the two levels of parallelism, current practice adopts a two-layer scheduling approach. The DFG scheduler exploits inter-OP parallelism and emits operators based on the dependencies. Furthermore, to support different hardware, Operators are treated as OPEC library functions. So, another layer of scheduler often implemented in hardware is required to employ the intra-OP parallelism and map intra-OP computation to execution units or EUs of an accelerator. The two-layer architecture works well when the operator scheduling overhead is negligible and when the intra-OP parallelism can saturate all EUs in an accelerator. However, in practice, this is often not the case. The main reason is that the performance of the accelerators increases very fast. For example, the single flow performance of the latest RTX 3090 GPU is about four times than that of the widely used P100 GPU. This results in low device utilization and pronounced operator scheduling overhead compared to the operator execution time. We have evaluated six models on a V100 GPU. The results show that the GPU utilization could be as low as 2% and the operator scheduling overhead could be up to 65%. Furthermore, the two-layer scheduling approach overlooks the subtle interplay between the inter- and the intra-operator parallelism. Here is, here is an example. The COM2D and the MATMOL operators have no dependencies and thus could run parallel. However, in two-layer architecture, to maximize operator performance, each operator will greatly span as many EUs as possible. Well, each EU may not be fully utilized. Then, the COM2D may need to wait for the MATMOL operator due to the lack of EUs. However, if we take both inter- and intra-OP parallelism into consideration, we could reduce the parallelism of the MATMOL and schedule COM2D to the rest EUs 
to make both the operators run in parallel, which may result in lower execution time. To solve these limitations, we present Rimer, a deep learning compiler that takes a holistic approach to manage the scheduling of inter and intra operator together. However, there are challenges to achieve this goal. First, current operators are OPEX functions scheduled by the Hardware Scheduler and do not impose fingering the intra OP parism to software. To exploit the intra operator parism through a software compiler, Rimer redefines a DN operator as an R task operator or R operator. It consists of a group of independent, homogeneous R tasks. Each R task is a minimum schedulable unit, runs on a single EO of an accelerator. Therefore, R task at the fingering the intra OP information is deposed to Rimer. Second, there is another challenge that accelerators like GPU do not impose interfaces for intra OP scheduling. To address this challenge, Rimer abstracts a hardware accelerator as a virtualized parallel device. It contains multiple VUs and allows R tasks from different operators to run on a specified VU. A VEU will be mapped to one of the physical EU in an accelerator to perform the actual computation of R tasks. Therefore, V device as the fingering the scheduling capability is imposed to Rimer. Although we could impose the fingering the scheduling capability of operators and hardware, the fingering the scheduling could incur even more scheduling overhead. Fortunately, we observed the predictability of DN computation. That is to say, most DNS DFG is available at the compile time and the operator execution exhibits deterministic performance. Here is the operator execution time of 1000 runs on the ResNext model, which uses 7% standard error in average. Therefore, to address this challenge, Rimer moves the scheduling decision from runtime to compile time and statically maps the execution plan to the accelerator. This not only avoids unnecessary runtime overhead, but also allows the scheduling policy to fully exploit the inter and the intra operator parism together. Specifically, Rimer separates the scheduling mechanism from its policy. On the mechanism side, it provides scheduling interfaces for policy to generate an execution plan and a profiler to get the policy. On the policy side, we developed a simple wavefront scheduling policy that considers inter and intra operator parallelism together. Here is the policy. First, we assume that each R operator has different kernel implementations, including fastest kernels that have lowest execution time but largest resources, and resource efficient kernels that have slower execution performance but less resources. Then the DFG of the R operators will be partitioned into waves by BFS, and the operators of the same wave have no dependencies and thus can run in parallel. For each wave, Rimer will select fastest kernels if current wave does not saturate the accelerator and will select resource efficient kernels for interplay if current wave saturates the accelerator. For example, there is only one operator in the wave zero, so Rimer will select the fastest kernel for this wave and schedule our tasks to VEUs. There are two parallel operators in wave 1, and thus, Rimer will select resource efficient kernels for this wave to reduce intra OP parallelism and make these two operators run in parallel. For wave 2, there is only one operator, so, Rimer will select the fastest kernel for this wave and schedule our tasks to VEUs. 
the execution plan of this example DFG is generated by the wavefront scheduling policy and could be statically mapped to the physical separator for execution. Our evaluation shows that such a simple policy could already outperform the state of the art. We hope our mechanism could enable future research on more about the scheduling policies to explore the optimization space. Here is a case study to show how Reimer optimized DNN computation. The baseline is the two-layer approach with existing compiler optimizations like kernel fusion and kernel tuning. When we enable the operator co-scheduling on the same kernel site, it can achieve 2.6 times speed up. Furthermore, when we enable the interplay in operator co-scheduling, it can achieve another 2.3 times speed up. Specifically, the Metmore operator takes most of the execution time in this model, and the kernel in baseline and code schedule has 1024 R tasks and about 4 microseconds in kernel execution. However, when we enable interplay, Reimer will select a slower Metmore kernel with 16 R tasks to reduce the intra OP parallelism and enable more inter OP parallelism resulting in better end-to-end -end model execution. Here is the end-to-end -end performance comparison on NVIDIA CUDA GPU. Comparing with the state-of-the-art DL framework TensorFlow, Reimer can achieve up to 33 times speed up. When comparing with the state-of-the-art DL compiler XLA, Reimer can achieve up to 20 times speed up. When comparing with the state-of-the-art DL compiler TVM, Reimer can achieve up to more than 6 times speed up. When comparing with TensorRT, a state-of-the-art vendor optimized of library by NVIDIA, Reimer can still achieve up to 3 times speed up. Reimer achieves such good performance by operator cost scheduling, which improves device utilization and reduces scheduling overhead. Next, we show how well does Reimer utilize the GPU's parallel resource on a V100 GPU. TensorFlow only achieves 20% GPU utilization in average on these six models. When comparing with TensorFlow, Reimer can improve the average GPU utilization by more than four times. In order to remove side effects caused by the different implementation, we create another baseline named Reimer Base, which can be treated as another two-layer DNN compiler implemented in the same code base of Reimer. When comparing with Reimer Base, Reimer could improve the utilization by 1.6 times, thanks to the operator code scheduling provided by Reimer. Next, we show how much does Reimer reduce the runtime scheduling overhead. Reimer base could reduce the average overhead from 32 milliseconds to 2 milliseconds over TensorFlow by existing compiler optimizations like kernel fusion and kernel tuning. And Reimer could further reduce the average overhead to 0.3 milliseconds by enabling operator code scheduling. We also evaluate the efficiency of Reimer on AMD ROCAM GPUs by comparing it with TensorFlow and TVM. Compared with TensorFlow, Reimer can outperform it by 14 times on average and up to 41 times for the LSTM TC model. Compared to TVM, Reimer can improve the performance by 5 times on average and up to 7 times. We also conduct a preliminary evaluation of Reimer on a graph core IPU, a state-of-the-art DNA accelerator with an architecture quite different from GPUs. As the figure shows, Reimer's preliminary 
implementation can bring up to five times performance improvement compared with Rammer base, which demonstrates the effectiveness of the abstractions of Rammer on new accelerator architectures. We have implemented Rammer with 52,000 lines of code and open sourced it on GitHub. Currently, Rammer supports TensorFlow, Onyx, and TorchScript as front end model input and supports NVIDIA GPU, AMD GPU, and GraphCore IPU as backend devices. To conclude, Rammer proposed a holistic approach to manage the inter- and the intra-parism in DNN for scheduling to address the fundamental limitations of existing two-layer architecture. To achieve this, Rammer is proposed as a hardware neutral solution, including key abstractions to impose fine-grained scheduling capability in both data flow graph and hardware. That's all, thank you. If you have questions about Rammer, please feel free to contact us.